Hi there, Toy here, and now it's time to talk about some TV. So, like I said, back to back, here I am again. Woohoo! I gotta get these videos in before the end of the month so I can keep my goal of uploading something every month. And since my voice feels like it's about to die again, I'm just recording another video right now. So what have you been watching lately? I have been watching Netflix. Uh, <laughs> I've been sick, so it's been easy to watch some things. That's not unusual for me. But I've also been watching a little bit of Amazon Prime, so let's get started. First thing, I don't think I mentioned this before, but if I did, I'll say it again. My husband and I watched um, a couple episodes of Electric Dreams. That is the um, kind of TV miniseries based on the Philip K. Dick Electric Dream short story series. And I love this idea because I could see more people doing stuff like that. If there's like a really cool anthology of, of short stories out there, they could turn it into a uh, TV series. I love it. Also, we recently watched the most recent series of The Tick. My husband loves The Tick. And because I've, you know, we've been together a long time, I've grown, grown to love The Tick as well. I mean, like, he has Tick comic books. He liked the old cartoon. He even liked the real, really cheesy live action one that was out before. And so this one, we've been watching it the, the most recent season. We kind of binged it. And, um... We enjoyed it. I mean, it's it, it's the tick is one of those things that it's not for everyone, but for the people who like it, I feel like what they have going on right now on Amazon Prime is pretty good. You know, there are some people who, you know, fanboys and fangirls can be some of the worst people. They're so judgmental. I'm one of them, but <laughs> um, I will say that it, of course it's not going to be exactly like it was in the comic books. It's an adaptation, so I like it. He likes it. Let's move on. So that's all for Amazon Prime right now. Not watching a whole lot on there. There's some other stuff we're interested in, but mostly right now it's the Electric Dreams and the Tick. So back over to Netflix, Jessica Jones. Oh my goodness. Waiting for Jessica Jones to come out was not easy. And then not being able to watch it all in one setting was even harder. You know, having to get up, go to work being sick and falling asleep, stuff like that. But we got through it. I'm so excited. And it, it really never ceases to amaze me just how horrific this character's life can get, yet she keeps on going. I mean, <laughs> and being the fangirl that I am, you know, I do have some issues, but they're mine. I'm not going to share them with you. I want you to formulate your own opinions. I just have some ideas about the way Marvel does their their cinematic universe as compared to like their television universe and why aren't there more crossovers and you know stuff like that but regardless I thoroughly enjoyed this second season of Jessica Jones and I don't think it's a spoiler I'm pretty sure everyone knows that the purple man shows up I wish there had been more of him but even without him it was fantastic if you're into it at all please check it out another thing that my husband and I are watching I'm I actually have, I'm trying to flip through some stuff so I don't forget anything. We are currently also watching Altered Carbon. It's a very interesting concept, being able to download a person's consciousness into a sleeve, which is basically a different body. Um, and there's more to the story. It's a very futuristic story. It's a very mature story. I would say for people who like um, Game of Thrones type content, you'll probably like this. It's not always easy for me to watch. Like I'm not against mature content. I do sometimes get bored with gratuitousness. Is that the term? But so far, because I haven't watched that mini episode, it hasn't been that gratuitous, but it's, it's borderline. Luckily, the story is really, really good. I love like futuristic type stuff. I, I like this idea of like artificial intelligence and stuff like that. Um, it terrifies me and it's great. So I'll probably keep watching it until it just gets too bad. Hopefully it never gets to that point, but my husband's enjoying it too. We, we have been watching this show called Ugly Delicious and it's like a, it's not really a cooking show. It's a show about chefs, but they don't really cook a whole lot on it. This one particular chef, Chef Chang, we, we liked him. 
um, from another show we saw. And he just explores different, like each episode focuses on focuses on a different uh, cuisine or type of food. Like one episode was about pizza and, you know, going back to Nepal and seeing the original pizza, comparing it to like Domino's. <laughs> I mean, there's more to it, but, you know, and so then he did like an episode on tacos. Like this dude thought he didn't like tacos until he had a really good taco. And so anyway, it, it's ugly delicious on Netflix. If you like that kind of stuff, it's, it's, it's really more of a travel show kind of gets you thinking about people and what they eat and why they eat it and their likes and stuff like that. I like it. Uh, so I recently watched a um, an independent film that's on Netflix. I don't know that it's an original, regardless. Anyway, a blogger that I really like to follow, he's one of my favorite authors, Alistair Kavanaugh, had mentioned it on his blog. And it's been on my kind of to check out list for a while. And because he liked it, I thought I would check it out. And I liked it too. It's called Radius. And like him, I was leery of the premise, which is why I hadn't watched it yet. This basically, this guy has some kind of um, illness or disease. Like he's not physically sick, but there's something about him that when people get too close to him, they get sick and die, like almost instantly. And so when you think with a premise like that, well, how far can it go? Everyone who gets near this dude is going to die. Well, there's this other character who enters the story when she's around, she kind of neutralizes him. So they're able to kind of move around like pieces on a board. You know, if she gets too far away, people die. If she gets close and, but it creates this weird dynamic of them trying to survive and get to safety. And the way it ends, I mean, I saw it coming, but I was hoping that it wasn't going to end that way because, you know, you know, I don't know how to describe it. I thought it was really good. I mean, it's it's not a high budget film. You can tell it's it, but it's not crappy at all. It's I it I think it was really good. So you know, Radius. If you want to watch something a little different, give it a try. Another thing, I'm still on my animation kick. Um, I, I remember last time I did this video, I was talking about a, a bunch of short animations that I had watched. Well, this one is um, a full length animated movie, and it is called April and the Extraordinary World. And this one is a future sixteen punk story. It's an alternate history of at one point in history something happens and it prevents everything else from happening. The industrial revolution doesn't happen. The discovery of electricity, like all those other things, doesn't happen. So they get stuck in this like steampunk um, world. All these scientists are being gathered for their knowledge, but not really being used. And so I thought it was a really cool story. There's a talking cat in it if that appeals to you at all. I'm not really a cat person, but that's just because I'm allergic to them. I think they're cute. <laughs> so if you are into talking cute cats, you might want to check this out. Um, and it especially if you like steampunk too. So that is April and the Extraordinary World. There was another show that I was trying to watch, but I just, it was some content. I think you reach a certain point in your life you, you just can't indulge in it anymore. I watched like the first season and a half and at first it did really seem interesting. Yeah, it's called Love. And I believe this is a Netflix original. One of the writers is Judd Apatow. I can't remember who the other guy is. And so basically one character is this kind of needy, clingy, misunderstood, kind of geeky guy, but not really. And then the other one is this um, young, attractive woman who, you know, she's a career woman, but she's also a hot mess because she's an addict and they try to fall in love. So, of course, that's just a bunch of drama. And at first I thought it seemed kind of quirky and cute, but after a while, it just made me angry. It's like, I just don't need to be around that. I'm sure some people will absolutely love it. Like I can see people watching this show love and loving it. But me, after a while, I was just like, I can't continue watching this show and not be mean to my husband for no reason. Like, it makes, like, you know what I'm saying? So, love didn't work out for me. But if you like that kind of drama, like, I think the show is really well written for what it is. I mean, if, if you, I think certain people, this will appeal to them. Like, if you're in a relationship with someone who's an addict, you might be able to re relate to the show a whole lot better than me. You know, so there's different little things. You can try it. It just didn't work out for me. So I think that's the majority of what I've been. Oh, no, 
How did I almost forget? Sorry. Okay. So I'm kind of a been a tomboy my whole life, but there's a few like handful of girly girly things. You know, breakfast at Tiffany's is one of my, you know, favorite girly girl things. Gidget. I don't know why I love Gidget. You know, there's just a handful of like girly girly things. And so one thing that I loved growing up as a kid was Anne of Green Gables that eventually went on to be Anne of Avalie. And so Netflix has done an original series called Anne with an E. And again, been sick and stuff. So I've had time to watch it and I adore it. I don't care for the intro, but luckily with modern technology, I can skip right through that, get to the good stuff. And I love the new little girl they have portraying Anne. I love the setting. I like how they've been able to do more with it than maybe they've done in the past. I can't wait for season two. So there you have it. That's what I've been watching. I don't know how I found time to watch stuff and read stuff and work. <laughs> in the month of February, March, you know, it's I'm, I'm cutting it close. I'm almost at the end of March here, so I'll have to do another one of these, but whatever. Um, so let me know, Did have you watched any of this stuff? Did you like it, not like it? Is there something you want to recommend to me? Um, I get network television, <laughs> I get Amazon Prime, and I get Netflix. I don't think I have a Hulu, but you never know. <laughs> so if you want to recommend me something, I'll be happy to try it. And that's all I have for now. Bye-bye.